and we're going to talk about people who maybe need to smoke weed. <laughs> uh, yeah, they actually probably do because now there's a, a study that finds a link between religious fundamentalists and brain damage. So I find this story fascinating. Daniel was talking about it to me earlier today. Dude, what's going on? So I want to say, first of all, I just love that the article had Michelle Bachman at the cover. I just want to point that out. It's not relevant to the story. Yeah. But a study published in the journal uh, Neuropsychologia, I hope I'm getting that right, has shown that religious fundamentalism is in part the result of a functional impairment in the brain region known as the prefrontal cortex, which is right about here. The findings suggest that the damage to the particular areas of the prefrontal cortex in, uh, indirectly promote religious fundamentalism by diminishing cognitive flexibility and open this this is a big part of what this article is about is that sentence a psychology term that describes the personality trait which individuals indiv involves uh, dimensions like curiosity creativity and open-mindedness the article goes on and on but it basically keeps reiter reiterating these points over and over again they do a later in it they talk about how they did a a CT scan, I believe, yeah, with a number of uh, veterans who came back with PTSD, comparing them to veterans that, with no damage. It was 119 veterans with brain damage, 30 without, and uh, compared uh, and went into the religion. The basic, the point of this entire study, and again, it's just one study, so there's always the caveat with any new study is it's a study that's new, hasn't had the chance for someone to, to debunk it, hasn't gotten a chance to, you know, that we might have in five years to make it a little more... A reasonable the study nonetheless is making the point that people who have brain damage have it's very hard for them to be openness and flexible in situations on the fly and people who uh, are very fundamentally uh, religious have those same trends of uh, not being open and having this uh, rigidity in their thought patterns and they're going from the point of that it's easier for people with these kind of um, this kind of brain damage to become fundamentalist because it's it agrees with those same kind of thought patterns. I want to open it up to you guys. Okay, so um, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because look, there's there is a problem with religious fundamentalism, especially when it comes down to trying to explain the natural order of the world. And when you and when you read one of these stories, especially in the Bible or any other religious text how a grown man takes his son up to a mountain and is basically going to kill him because God told him to do it. You really have to question that person's mental standing and the awkward conversation coming down from said hill once the invisible sky guy said, no, don't kill your son. Thank you for proving your loyalty. I mean, really? I mean, we really have to have a conversation about this because there's a lot of religious, there's a lot of uh, idiotic statements that are in a lot of these religious texts. Now, look, they are necessary for society to, to function, especially in the early days, right? But I mean, to play a role in that, describing how the universe or science works, it, it's just not gonna match up. The earth is not 6,000 years old, it's billions of years old. Humans and all these prehistoric animals would not be able to coexist because of different oxygen levels, as well as not to, not to mention the the, the, the clear danger some of these prehistoric animals would pose to humans. You think a, a human can stand up against a T-Rex or a Velociraptor? That's not going to happen. And and also at the same time, uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the influence of of these uh, religious fundamentals, especially in our political system, stagnates our democracy because you know as, as soon as you enter. Uh, yeah, especially fundamentalism into a democratic government, it's going to stagnate and it's going to fall backwards. Now, the rest of the international community is pushing forward. We're still regressed and we're, we, we're, we're assuming that all these natural storms are just what? God's will, according to some elected officials. There's ways to really address and explain these things. But a, a six, uh, how old is how old are some of these religious texts? What six thousand years old or something? It's, it varies, give yeah, or take. Yeah, give yeah. or take. All right. So, so, but the, the the point is, is that you know the rest of the world is going on, pushing forward, and we really can't have the risk of having someone who is mentally deranged in the seat of power or explaining how the natural order of the world works. So, Paul, go ahead. So, uh, another angle of this that they brought up, which goes to conservatism, and I think yeah. that, that the, the root word of what it means to conserve, to maintain what exists, if you're someone that is, has very low openness, very low flexibility, you're going to just continue to maintain whatever the current status quo is, which feeds directly into uh, conservatism, which is all about maintaining the status quo as it is. That's why Republicans don't like passing new laws, because they want to conserve the laws that currently exist. They want to 
bring things back to a point that was further in the past because it's more it's it's more stable in their mind and that goes directly into this that if you have issues with openness or new ideas or thinking about things in a new way it's going to push you it's going i should say it's not going to push you it's going to push on an on the scale of all the people in the country many of them are going to be pushed in one direction and that is towards religious fundamentalism and towards conservatism yeah uh, so i want to hand it over to paul real quick but i want to read a ch uh, line in chat that actually has that's dead daniel i think you're going to really like a lot um it's from freethinker 59 too much lead paint used in the united states look if you watch some of our previous uh shows in the past daniel is a, le a lead contractor so and we've done a lot of coverage especially in east chicago indiana look the united states has a sad history with lead in our water in our gasoline uh, in our in our houses, and it's it it did leave an impact in a, in a lot of communities, and there is a conversation to see just what it what it has done, especially as we go forward in the next ten, fifteen, or twenty years. But uh, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, I want to make sure that we don't misrepresent misrepresent this study. So yeah. Daniel, you accurately pointed out that this is one study. It's you know it doesn't represent you know, full scientific consensus. And the other thing I want to point out is it's 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 calling attention to a correlation. Yeah. It's not demonstrating a causation. But the hypothesis pretty much stands to reason. Uh, a lot of the way that religion is framed is basically here is an unfalsifiable uh, claim that is not supported by any evidence. Um, you should believe it. You have to believe it on faith. Uh, okay. I, if you if it's an unfalsifiable claim that is not supported by any evidence why should i believe it my default stance as a rational person should be i don't believe you you can't provide evidence so i don't believe you it's as if i said i'm holding an invisible pizza and it's warm and delicious hey that's an unfalsifiable claim Paul, you can't you're, tell you're, me you're, i'm you're, not you're gonna have the pizza conversation again last saturday's show everyone's going crazy with Paul, pizza. next every time when behind you at all times when no one's looking is a giant purple elephant right so unfalsifiable claims that are not supported by evidence i should my default stance should be to reject that claim um Matt Dillahunty does a show called The Atheist Experience. If you've never seen it, it's excellent. He's been doing it for 10 years now mm -hmm. out of Austin on public access. It's on YouTube also. Check it out. He makes a, one of his standard go-to points about speaking with faith because you talk to a lot of people who have uh, religious convictions and you press them for evidence, press them for evidence, press them for evidence. It always comes back to, well, you have to have faith. And basically the logic goes like this. Isn't there, couldn't you believe anything and justify that belief using faith? That answer is yes. You could literally believe anything, true or false, whatever that thing is you believe, you can justify it using faith and nobody can, nobody can argue against the fact that you have faith in a thing. But because you can literally believe anything and justify it using faith, then we should conclude that justifying something by faith is not an adequate way of determining whether that thing is true. So if the only thing you have in your, in your favor for any belief is faith, there is no reason you should hold that belief. You, you haven't been able to, ju test, uh, to justify at all the veracity of the claim. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, it, but then it goes into, because again, I, we want to reiterate, it's one study, just like I said, I don't want to put too much emphasis that, oh, this is the word, or but this is, this is the rule of all, this is the word of God or anything. But it, it's a thing that, like Paul said, it stands to reason, it fits a lot of things that we see that on top of that it makes in the current world the current era of science and propaganda and disinformation and dis science even all these other things the things that are very important to have access to as a mental repertoire is the openness to new ideas that you've not heard before the skepticism to tell whether those ideas just by hearing them are worthwhile or not and the flexibility to deal with all these new circumstances in life, which is, you know, should you, it's, should you move to another state? Should you do all these things? So should I retrain myself in this or that? Should I, when I look at a news uh, article, should I take it seriously? Is there a question of how should I look it up? How should I know when to look it up? Those are all very, very important questions to successfully living, integrating, and updating yourself in this modern era that we live in where everything is happening in a faster in one year than would happen in a decade, a uh, hundred years ago. But if you're, in a, if you're a person who is 
It's very hard to be open. It's very hard to change your mind. It's very hard to be in a new mental position. And because of uh, because you're able to take things on no evidence, skepticism is a lot harder because skepticism is all about saying there's not enough evidence for this thing or this evidence doesn't quite make a lot of sense. Let me dig deeper. And you can't really do that if you take things on faith. So it's hurtful for people in their day to day lives to not have these traits. But again, we're trying to figure out is, is this a correlation that we see with religion? Is it just happened to happen that way? And it ha or happened to look like it's happening that way? Or is there something more to it? And that's a good note to end it on. But, um, and as we transition to another story, there's a question directed to you in chat and you you can answer it, Daniel. Uh, Daniel, what would lead a, a, a baby uh, cost me? I have a typical Chicago bungalow. Um, it really depends on how many square feet you have, how many rooms you're in. If I would assume it's interior, I have uh, expertise dealing with uh, exterior work. Um, but generally speaking, uh, for a professional, first of all, you have to have someone that's certified. And this assumes a lot, of, a lot of people say they're certified, but they don't have certification, which can run you a $30,000 fine per infraction from the EPA, which is not fun. Um, but if you have a type, typical, typical, how many, it depends on the windows that you have. I mean, there's a huge amount of variables, but. But you're talking thousands, right? Yeah, no, it's, yeah. I'm trying to, let me think if I can give an easier way to do this. The general multiplier when I do work, if it is a lead abatement that I have to do versus regular painting that I would have to do, it tends to be about three times as expensive to deal with a lead abatement. Um, but it, 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 there's so much variation in everything um, to deal with it because it's, it's such a case by case, but maybe about three times what it would be if it wasn't. In fact, you see that fancy nameplate right in front of Daniel, right there? There's a Twitter account. You can message him privately. You, know, you talk to him then. So how's that sound? Yeah, I can work with that. All right, if you have go. your direct messages open. Yeah. Maybe. I hope I do. I've just got a Twitter account for you guys. So, yeah, so there we go, guys. Uh, but yeah, again, fascinating study, especially on this 420. I think, for example, all of us, you know, let's take a step back and, you know, really breathe in and enjoy this day because in the United States, we're having, again, a conversation of the about legalization of cannabis and the culture and mindset's changing. And I think we all need to relax a little, but speaking of- doobie. Don't relax with lead paint though. That's don't, yeah, no, don't, no, don't, 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 no, bad idea. But and, and, and like, unlike the Romans, don't flavor your wine with lead either. That's a Yeah, you want, do you want a Caligula? I, I don't that's want how, that's how you get That's Caligula. how you get a Caligula. <laughs> Hey guys, do you like the video? If so, be sure to give us a sub and hit the bell for notification. You know how YouTube is. And if you have the time, check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages and check us out at hardlensmedia.com. Be sure to check out our Patreon if you really support what we do and want to support us at Independent Media 